Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Today's video is going to be an El Nino update and just a discussion on what's possibly going to occur, whether it's going to be an El Nino, an El Nino Madokai, and etc. Everything along those lines. Um, before we get into this video though, consider subscribing to my channel. <clears throat> consider liking the video. If you're wondering why I'm telling you guys to do this if the video hasn't even started or you don't, you're new to my channel, well... It's just something you could do or keep in the back of your mind while you watch this video and check out my videos on my other channel, uh, on this channel, and then you could decide whether you want to subscribe or not, whether this channel suits your needs. So that is always a great thing you guys can do. It's for free for you, and it gives me a lot in terms of support on YouTube, so that would be much appreciated. So the first thing, um, you can see this is a different website that I have because of the other ENCO, um, sorry, ENCO, <clears throat> Um, website that shows usually the all the forecasts and what Noah has to say it isn't working for some reason so I needed to use this um, HTML version of the file and um, so let's go back to the summary and this is what we're basically working with an El Nino watch as of now El Nino neutral conditions are present equatorial sea surface temperatures or SST which I'll refer to in this video are near average across much of the Pacific Ocean there is a 60% chance or roughly around 60% chance of an El Nino in the northern hemisphere fall 2018 November through September through November increasing to 70% during winter 2018-2019 so if you're wondering what on earth <clears throat> doesn't El Nino even mean what on earth that would if this came true which again this is not a hundred percent I mean clearly says 70 or 60 so um not a hundred percent but if it does come true then you could expect something like this hold up okay so this is an El Nino typical pattern for the winter months and late fall months you can see there's warm and dry across the north and wet and cool across the south so yes that would mean less snow for the north <clears throat> and more snow for the south <clears throat> now this would not mean that the south would get more snow than the north it would just mean that based on average the south will be receiving more snow than the north so for an example let's pick some place like um, Birmingham Alabama let's say their average is around four inches three inches of snow maybe two somewhere in that ballpark and let's see let's say it's just three and they get maybe this year since it might be an El Nino they get six so they're above average Let's say some place like Rhinelander or Green Bay, Wisconsin, their average is around 60. This year they get around 40. So they're below average, but they still have more snow than the south. So hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. And um, there's a catch to this, however. So first off, I want to talk about a possibility of a different type of El Nino developing, and it's called an El Nino Modokai. And you may be wondering, what, well, what's the difference between an El Nino and an El Nino Modokai? Well, the main differences are in sea surface temperatures, and those are the only differences. Well, obviously, and the impacts they have on the U.S. pattern, but in terms of the actual base and where they develop and what the differences are, you can see that during a typical El Nino, which is called an eastern-based El Nino, a lot of the sea surface temperatures are in the east of the Pacific Ocean. This is the Pacific Ocean extends from Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, areas like that, all the way to South American coast. And you can see that in this area, um, it is east to central base, but definitely not in the west, and more eastern base than central base. That is a typical El Nino. And El Nino Wadoka, you can see, is much different. The It's not as above average in certain locations. It's much more broader. It's in the center, hence the name for an El Nino Modokai, also called a central-based El Nino. And you can see cooler waters right off the coast and cooler waters right off the coast of, say, Papua New Guinea. So, again, um, there are some subtle differences. They may not seem big. They may not seem important on this map, but they can he create huge differences in terms of U.S. weather. So, um, I would actually want to first show you what may happen if an El Nino Modokai happens. So, as I showed you, an El Nino pattern usually looks something like this. But during an El Nino Modoka year, um, it could be something like this. So this is November through March 2009, 2010. You may be wondering, why am I doing 2009, 2010? Well, 2009, 2010 was an El Nino Modoka year, a classic example. You could see a lot of the eastern, southeastern sections are above average and up the eastern seaboard. But in the far northern section, still above average, and that is still the hints of the El Nino. But the El Nino Modoka is more... Um, centered across the southeast rather than just the south so um you can see that, that this is definitely 
a lot different from the typical El Nino pattern. This could create much more snow for areas like the Mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley, and even parts of the South, which in the typical El Nino year still would be benefiting from more snow. And now to look at a more broader look at a bunch of El Nino Modoka years, November through March, you can see that it's not as vigorous as just that one year I showed you. So, um, there's, st but still below average for up the east coast into the southeast, and much of the northwest is above average. So I think we could s see something similar this year. That's why my <coughs> winter outlook is so similar to um, this map right here because I think it'll be a combination between this one and this one. Not as strong as this maybe, but not as weak as this. I think it could be somewhere along here. It could be below average in terms of temperatures and then above average for much of the rest of the country and around average for a stripe anywhere from between Colorado, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Michigan, Illinois, uh, Missouri, Ar Northwestern Arkansas, and Eastern Texas. So um, if you want to check that out, I'll post a card to it right now. But um, I'd also want to show you why I think that an El Nino Modoka may be developing this year because you may be wondering, okay, well, if these are the impacts, how do you know that, wh why are you assuming one may be developing this year? Well. If we saw the El Nino Modokai, look at this, anomalous SST during El Nino Modokai. This is how it looks like um, during an El Nino Modokai, and this is how the sea surface temperatures look like right now. So it definitely looks more like an El Nino Modokai, and trust me, I'm not basing it off just off the looks. There's a couple of other things I want to show you, but um, it is warmer off the coast of Papua New Guinea where it matters during an El Nino Modokai should be cooler, so we don't have that yet. It is warmer in the center of the ocean, and we have that during an El Nino Modokai, but um, you can see some cooler waters right off the coast, but they're intermixed with that yellow, which is above average, so um, not necessarily, we don't, we don't have an El Nino or an El Nino Modokai pattern right now, as mentioned by this website, hold up right here, nope, can't find it, right here. It is, as of now, their ENC neutral conditions are present. So ENC neutral is present, but we got to look at a couple of other things. We look at the PDO, it's flaming hot, and during an El Nino Madoka, it's also pretty much above average um, in terms of the sea surface temperatures. And then south of Greenland, it is below average right now. It is below average. Off the east coast during an El Nino Madoka, it is above average. Right now, it is above average. So you can see there are some differences, some subtle um, changes. So that is definitely, I mean, also look, during an El Nino, these things are flipped and these things are flipped. So right now we're seeing more of an El Nino Madokai pattern. And if we were to look also at the back to this location, this is also what matters. So these are basically, they separated the El Nino um, area into four different categories. Nino 4, Nino 3.4, Nino 3, Nino 1 and 2. And during, or for the regular website where this actually like for some reason it's not working today and uh, and a regular website showed us the regions where it corresponds to but I pulled up an image so um you can see it's getting for the past late, late latest weekly SST so it's really getting above average in terms of the Nino 4 and 3.4 so where are you wondering where that is Nino 3.4 and 4 are basically the center of the country or center of the ocean sorry it's late at night I'm recording this video and um, you can see Nino 3.4, Nino 4 are the sensors of the ocean, and um, that's you know typical of an El Nino Madokai, central-based El Nino. We need that central-based warm water, so that is definitely a good sign. However, if you go back to this website, you can see that Nino 3 and Nino 1 and 1 and 2 are technically a little bit below average in the past couple of weeks have been dropping, and those are right by the coast, which is what we need in terms of an El Nino Madokai. So an El Nino Madokai may be forming this winter, um, maybe not, but in terms of um, probability, I would say 50-50. In terms of an El Nino, some sort of an El Nino happening, I would say 80 to 90 at this point. And neutral is maybe possible. La Nino for sure not happening um, unless something radically happens. And then, so La Nino most likely not going to happen. A neutral most likely not going to happen. A weak El Nino probably going to occur and an El Nino Modokai may also occur. So those are the two things you need to different different differ and shade about these two things. It could be because there are some differences between an El Nino weak El Nino and a Modokai El Nino. So um, again, this is what a what we could expect this winter in terms of an El Nino a Modokai. But if an El Nino just formed without the El Nino Modokai, we could expect something like this. So thank you guys so much for watching, um, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.